fiance cheated on me with another man, so I broke up with her. Now that she has committed self-slaughtering, everyone is blaming me for her death. Hey guys, I need some serious advice as I'm pretty much being cornered by everyone, and I really don't know what else to do. My mental state is declining, and I'm left wondering if it's really all my fault. A little background, my ex-fiancé and I had been together for almost six years and engaged for four out of those six years. I was introduced to her by a close friend at a party, and we just clicked. She was attractive, had a great personality, and had similar hobbies as me, which made it perfect. Back in April of this year, I started noticing little changes in her. She started wearing more revealing clothes to work, putting on more makeup, and so on. To be honest, I had no problem with any of that stuff, as it's her body, she can wear whatever and put on as much makeup as she wants. But what made things worse for me was when she started coming home late from work or spending the weekend out instead of with me. I once asked her why she never invited me to come out with her, to which she replied that it was only girls night out and that her other friends would not be happy if I tagged along, as they were not bringing their own boyfriends. It all came crashing down in June when we had a huge fight because she decided that instead of going out on a date with me, she already had made plans with her friends and thought it was rude to cancel. That was it for me, I blew up at her, and we had a huge fight, which resulted in her packing her bags and leaving. I didn't hear from her for almost a week. None of her friends knew where she was, and none of her folks even knew what was going on until she finally contacted me and wanted to talk. Imagine my surprise when she confessed to me that there was another guy involved and that all this time she was hanging out with him while lying to me about being with her friends. I was furious. I wanted nothing to do with her and was going to break up with her until she got on her knees and begged me to give her a second chance, which my foolish self did, but only after she revealed everything to me. It made me sick to my stomach, but in the end, I forgave her and told her to delete all contact with the other guy. She promised, and things kind of went back to how they were before. We were even spending more time together, but that feeling, that trust, wasn't there anymore. Everything was kind of okay until two weeks ago when a friend of mine, who was visiting another city three hours away from where I lived, sent me a picture with the message sorry, Bro, that broke my already broken heart into a billion pieces. The picture was of my ex-fiancé at a mall, three hours away, holding hands with a stranger I didn't know. I broke down, I was heartbroken. She was a liar, especially since I thought she was at work while in reality, she was three hours away with her lover. When I got home from work, I waited for her and confronted her immediately. She denied everything and called me a psycho for not believing her and for not trusting her until I showed her the picture my friend sent me. Her face told me everything, and when she started crying, I knew I had made a huge mistake in taking her back, so I ended it. She cried and begged me to think it over and not throw away everything we had together, which made me angry. I'm not proud, but I slapped her. I'm still not proud, but her saying crap like not to throw away everything when it was her who threw away everything pissed me off. I told her to pack her stuff and leave, called her parents and mine, and told them everything. Her parents came to help her, and I told them to basically leave after they told me to think it over and make the right decision before ending it. She begged me not to end things, but I did, I had to for my own peace of mind. I didn't hear from her or her parents until three days ago when my parents called me to let me know that my ex-fiancé had committed self-slaughtering. Her parents found her hanging, and she had left a letter apologizing to everyone, including my parents and me and saying she was sorry from the bottom of her heart for what she did to me and that she couldn't live without me, so she ended it. I am at a loss. Her friends and family are blaming me, and my own mother told me it was my fault. She said I should have forgiven her since I was clearly worth committing self-slaughtering over. I am disgusted. I have taken some time off from work and have no clue what to do. Relevant comments. You took her back. You forgave her. She lied again and turned it on you, holding past transgressions over her. If it weren't for that picture, she would have kept lying. She was actively trying to manipulate you into thinking you were wrong and she was the victim. I think she realized she lost you for good, and it drove her to do what she did. Her parents are grief-stricken. They want to blame anyone for this. In the end, their daughter had mental health issues. Your mother, being a mother, feels their pain and, for some reason, wants to blame someone. I'm sorry for your loss. X or not, this woman meant something to you. Talk to the friend who gave you the heads up. He seems like he was the only one who really wanted what was best for you. If need be, seek therapy just to sort through everything. This is hugely traumatic for you. You even feel remorse for slapping her in a moment of complete betrayal. You have no reason to own her self-slaughtering. You owned up to emotions overtaking you and hitting her. You have nothing else to own up to. I wish you the absolute best in this difficult time.
OP clearly, you not only have your friend but, from the looks of the comments, the support of many Redditors. And glad my words were of some help. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much this means to me. The friend who sent me the picture has been coming over every day to look after me. He's a true bro, and once I'm in a better state of mind, I'll reward him for being here for me when my own family isn't. Edit. Hey guys, I need more advice. I don't plan on attending my ex fiance's funeral, but my friend who sent me the picture thinks that I'd be dumb if I don't. He says that just for one day, I should suck it up and attend her funeral just to pay my respects. To be honest, I don't want to because it's hard for me, but he says that if I don't attend, people will blame me even more. I don't know what to do. Comments? I wouldn't. It is only going to cause a huge fight if you do. Obviously, they will criticize you if you don't go, but so what? I think it's best to cut all contact with her family immediately. This, people need to grieve. People need space. A lot has gone down, and people are looking for anything and anyone to take out their emotions on. I assure you if you go, you will become part of the problem. The center of attention will shift from her and remembering her life to you and how they believe you were a part of the problem. No matter how out of your hands this whole situation was, I am sadly talking from experience. I had a good friend break up with her boyfriend of a few years. They had moved in together. He started being extremely controlling and aggressive, never hit her luckily. We all advised her to break it off before things got any worse or deeper. A week after, he was found hanging in their house. It turns out he was on antidepressants. No one knew, not even his family. They all blamed her. She went to the funeral, and she was in pieces. She blamed herself for everything, and when she arrived, she was treated like crap. Don't go. Move on. This is not your fault. This was her mental state that none of her direct family dealt with or saw coming and now needs someone to become the answer to all the problems they did not see. Story 2 So my wife and I were married for 6 years and together for 9 when she left me. We were high school sweethearts, and I thought we had an amazing relationship. We were one of those couples that everyone was jealous of. I was head over heels for her, and I thought she was for me too. We had always talked about having a family, and for the first three years of our marriage, we were actively trying. However, we found out that I was infertile, and we were devastated. It sent my wife into a depression, and for a while, I thought our marriage was going to fail. It was a really rough time for us. However, we eventually came to the decision that we would try to save up for in vitro fertilization, and that if that didn't work, we would look into other options. So we spent the next two years saving up every penny we could. It was hard, but we both really wanted children. I thought we were doing really well, and I thought that our marriage was stronger than ever. We finally had enough money to undergo the procedure, and we were just about to make an appointment when my wife told me that she was having second thoughts. She said that she was worried that she would not be able to love a non-biological child as much as a biological one. I told her that I understood her concerns, but that I thought we should try anyways. She said she needed time to think about it. A few weeks later, she told me that she had made up her mind, and that she did not want to go through with IVF. I was very disappointed, but I told her that I loved her, and that I would support her in whatever she wanted to do. I told her that we could look into other options. However, she said that she had actually made up her mind about something else. She said that she had been seeing someone else for a few months and that she was in love with him. She said that she was moving in with him. I was completely blindsided. There had been no signs of this at all. I was completely devastated. I begged her to reconsider, but she said that her mind was made up. She left, and that was the last time I ever saw her. I was a complete wreck for a long time. I had no idea that anything was wrong in our marriage, and I had no idea that she was seeing someone else. I was in a very dark place for a long time, and I thought about ending things. However, I eventually sought therapy, and with the help of a therapist, I was able to work through my feelings and get to a better place. I was able to move on, and I eventually started dating again. However, I still thought about my ex-wife from time to time, and I always wondered what had happened to her. I had no way of contacting her, as she had changed her phone number and all of her social media accounts. So I was completely shocked when, three years after she left me, she showed up at my door. At first, I thought she was there to apologize for what she had done to me, but then I saw that she was holding a baby. She said that she needed to talk to me. She had a baby from him and he dumped her after she gave birth. She is begging me to take her back and I don't know what to do. Some comments. Run. Marriages end. That can happen. That's not what happened here. She cheated and leave you to dry. No second thoughts. The wife you missed did not exist. You own her nothing. Do not take her back. Close the door. Deadbolt it. Alarm the house. No. This is her doing. You will be responsible for every financial thing related to the baby. You sound like a decent guy. You have worked on yourself to heal and you now are dating.
do not take this woman back. You are not obligated to do so under any circumstances. I had this kind of happen to me. It's a long story like yours and it was five years after the event she turned up. I bought her into my house, gave her a cup of tea and then when she asked to come back to my life I said no but I'll give you a lift home. She just cried. I had no feelings for her or the child. None. Still don't. Story 3. It was quite by accident that I heard this. We had a group of our friends over and as the night went on we all kind of busted out into little groups. Some of us were in one room playing Texas Hold'em and a couple of others were watching a Lord of the Ring marathon. I thought she was watching the movies but she and one of her close friends were actually sitting in the kitchen drinking coffee and talking. Our group had run out of soda so I got up to go to the kitchen to get drinks and a couple of snacks. As I'm rounding the corner I hear my fiancé talking and before I completely come in the room I hear her clearly say Jason is great but he will never be the lover that Bill was. She then followed it up with it's not really fair to Jason though, Bill was just really gifted down there. At first I thought about just walking back into the card game and pretending like we didn't have any extra soda or food but I decided to kind of make a noise and go in. Her friend caught eye of me rounding the corner and I could see her make a face to my fiancé letting her know I was there. Of course she has no idea I heard her and she just stops talking to her and asks me how I'm doing and if I'm having fun. I was tempted to say something like I'm having as much fun as someone who is not gifted down there can but I didn't. I just said yes and proceeded to get my stuff and go back and finish the night. I just acted like nothing was wrong the rest of the night and went to bed. Needless to say it effed me up. I mean eff me up bad. I've never been jealous or what you would call insecure about myself until that moment. I couldn't sleep that night and I went through a myriad of emotions while laying there. At first I was angry, then I was humiliated, then I was depressed, then I was angry again. Look I realized that the male ego seemed stupid to women and even guys who are totally self-assured. I would have agreed with most of this prior to that night but once it has been damaged it is a tramp. I tried to hide any form of emotion about it or ever let her know but as the days went on I just kept getting worse and worse. I was avoiding her at all costs, and while she was suspicious she didn't really say anything. That is until she attempted to be intimate with me a few days later, and I flat out rejected her. It wasn't by a conscious decision on my part by the way. I had made the decision on my own to just try and get over it and move on. But in the moment instead of being sensually aroused I felt deeply inadequate and ashamed. Nothing was happening no matter how much either of us tried. She asked me what was wrong and I just told her I must have been stressed from work but she would not believe that or let it go. So much to my humiliation there I laid, bare in bed, unable to get an erection. I came clean and told her what I heard. Well this did not go over well at all. At first she tried to tell me I did not hear her correctly, but I just repeated to her verbatim what she had told her friend. Well once she couldn't deny it she then tried to apologize and to her credit she tried to listen to my feelings on the matter. Which once again I am sure was more of a big turn off for her because I was a wreck emotionally. She tried to tell me how much of a better person I was and how I satisfied her, and she wanted nobody else. But all I could hear was Charlie Brown's teacher noise. It's been almost a month and I have zero desire to be with her sensually. None. She is now getting frustrated about this as well but no matter what I have tried I just cannot get past this. It's not like she said we were both good lovers or anything like that. She clearly said he was far superior. And my guess is that being gifted down there means he was significantly larger than me as well. Well I know I can do all kinds of things with my hands, tongue and whatever else. But no matter what I do I can't grow in size. Obviously she refuses to talk about that with me saying that no matter what she says it will only make things worse because even if she says something positive about me I won't believe her. She's most likely right. Some backstory here. He dumped her. It was not a mutual breakup. He flat out dumped her and broke her heart. I know this because early on in our relationship she told me this. She said she wasn't ready to be serious about anybody because her previous ex left her and emotionally broke her. So this is not a case of me even being able to say well she's with me because she wants to be. If he hadn't dumped her she would never have left him. Now I have no idea if after all of these years she would leave me for him if he would come back but I don't think she would. I just don't know what to do here. I can feel myself checking out of the relationship. I know this is petty as crap but hearing the person you love tell someone else they prefer to have sex with someone else is just devastating to me. Her telling me all of my other good qualities has only made it worse because she is saying things that I think appeal to her and maybe other women but being told I am a good provider and will make a great husband makes me feel like crap. 
Like what would happen if I lost my good paying job or better yet what if I were to get injured and couldn't make anything more than state assistance? Would she be there to support and help me? Basically what I feel like right now is a really good friend who she just allowed to have sex with. I know in my head that this is not correct but in my heart that is what I feel. I'm sorry for the length here and I don't even know what I am asking here. I am totally lost and if this continues I just think I am going to break our engagement. TLDR Heard fiancé tell her friend that previous ex was superior in the sack. Presumable due to size among other things. Relationship has gone to hell since and I need advice. Edit Holy God I made this post last night and answered a couple of questions and then went to bed and got up today and went Christmas shopping hoping to make me forget my troubles and didn't even log in until just now. I have not even started to read the, at this point 7.7 thousand comments on this post. I don't know what anyone has said yet but thank you all for commenting either way. I am now going to begin the massive undertaking of looking at the comments. Also thank you for the gold and silver kind internet strangers. Edit 2. Dear God, I read all the way down to the bottom of the page thinking I had gotten through most of everything and then at the bottom it said load the 5.5k more posts. I'm stopping for the night, well morning actually. I was going to respond to people individually but there is just no way. I haven't even started reading the direct messages to me yet nor have I opened any of the 20 chat screens. There are issues I want out there because there are a couple of things that are being said that are not accurate. 1. She was to use the Barney Gumble phrase using sweet sweet drunk talk. In other words her and her friend were drunk while talking. Nope. Neither of us drink. We don't even have it in the house. 2. That I am upset she told her friend. Well this is an odd thing. Before I posted this honestly I wasn't that upset about this part. I was then and am still far more upset that this is how she feels. However now reading a lot of the post I have become somewhat aggravated that she did share this with her friend. I would never say anything about her to anyone that would put her in a lesser light. 3. That I am an insecure man child who should just man up and learn to do better. Well I'm certain the first part is true, being insecure and all, but the last part is just out of my control. No matter what I do I will only ever be 7 inches long. We have talked about this BTW, when she was trying to build me up. She said that I was already great with everything but the one thing I can't control. Okay, so I gave myself about a half inch to feel better. 4. No I'm not going to do anything rash. It's already been a month so it's not like this happened last week. But yes I have to decide what I am going to do here before long. It's not fair to either of us as I am just coasting through this and no longer committed. 5. She is sorry that I heard it. She said she is sorry she said it but at the end of the day she would not be sorry if I didn't catch her saying it. It is what it is. But yes I do believe she is regretting it because she has basically been a mess since I first told her. Me not wanting to be with her is bothering her a lot according to her. I don't know how much of that I believe but right now I guess I don't know why she would lie. It really has wrecked hell on our Christmas spirit this year I know that. Edit 3. Engineer for those who keep asking what I do for a living. She is a paralegal. Edit 4. People have been asking about the relationship with the ex and how I know she was heartbroken. We met about 9 months after they separated. I know that ultimately he wanted to be with someone else, although she has claimed he never cheated. He just ended things so he could be with another woman. She approached me at a local workshop and we started dating. On our fourth date when things started to get physical she broke down crying about the ex. It was certainly weird to hold someone while they cried about someone else but I did it. We sporadically dated for a couple more months in which time I never tried to cross any boundaries physically because it was obvious she wasn't over him. So while we just went out of dates I tried to keep myself of the mind that we were just friends because I didn't want to commit either. After close to two months she drags me from my car to her apartment and begins to tell me how much she has appreciated my patience with her and how she felt stupid about dragging me along for so long. Obviously that was our first night together. Within three months of that she is telling me that she loves me. So yes, she was still hung up on her ex for fact when we got together. I had thought, hoped she was over him before this happened. Update, it all came to a head last night. She just came out and asked me if I did not love her anymore and all that I could tell her was that a very large part of me still did. But that what she said had really made it so that another part of me just didn't anymore. This started a larger conversation that I won't bore you with. But ultimately it came down to me saying that I would have heard that he was just better at something or more attentive to something. Or was able to do something that I would have felt like I could have worked on it. I would have listened to anything she wanted worked on any technique or anything else that she would have shared with me. But to know that I was never going to measure up simply because of a physical issue was not something I thought I could get over any time soon or if I ever could for that matter. I was even honest and said that if it was just a ONS she had or some random guy who was just huge I might be able to get past that. 
but knowing that it was a guy who she was still madly in love with when I met her and only after time did she ever start to come around then it was just more than I could handle. She kept trying to tell me how much better I was at everything else and that I should not throw away a lifetime over one aspect. I told her that that one aspect sadly was just a high for me. Not all things are equal and that honestly it is a mental failing on my part that it is but whether it is genetics or a learned trait or whatever that yes I needed to be my spouse's best and she has already made it clear that I can never be. I tried my best to be gentle. I tried to take all of the blame of stating that I knew that my attitude was probably not healthy but it was who I am. BTW I'm typing this as though this were a clean conversation. It wasn't, there was lots of crying, by both of us. This is not a happy ending or even a satisfying one. I am beyond effed up in the head over the entire situation. Everybody's Christmas is ruined. We had big family gatherings that we both were attending together and now we have to somehow break it to our families what has happened. This alone is causing me massive stress because my parents loved her. And what in the hell am I going to say is the reason why we are not together. She didn't cheat and if I say that I felt like she was still hung up on her ex she will obviously deny it and she will tell them the truth. It's effed up no matter how this goes down. In the end I feel like a massive failure. I feel like a failure as a man because of not living up to comparison. And I feel like a failure because I wasn't able to just man up and either get over it. She has begged me to go to couples counseling and initially I said no because at the end of the day what does it change? We can talk about every single thing and I can try and look at things from a different way and at the end of the day the woman who I wanted to marry just told one of our friends that no matter what I do I will never be as good as her ex. I just cannot see 5 years from now ever being okay with this. But because she legitimately seems heartbroken I agreed to go. But that does not mean I will keep going. Today I moved out a lot of my stuff and am staying with a co-worker for a few days until I can get a place for myself. She has been with her sister all day. I feel like crap. Thank you to everyone who took the time to type out a response. I honestly have tried to read everything even if I didn't reply to very many. The tramp of all of this is that I still love her. There is so much of me right now that wants to pick up the phone and call her and beg her to come back. Edit. Well once again I posted this and then went away for a while. I went with my friend to see Mortal Engines and the to dinner, and then we've been talking for a long while so I started reading a while ago. It is going to take me forever to read and once again I don't think responding individually will ever happen because of the large number of posts and private messages. But thank all of you for reading and responding. Edit 2. I guess I do want to share one thing I spoke with her about. When we were having our very long conversation I presented her with a scenario for her to compare. I know her well enough to know that comparing body parts or sensual prowess isn't going to impact her the same way it would me. So I put the scenario to her like this. I said what if you walked in and overheard me talking with my friend Tim and you heard this. Jill is great but she will never understand me and comfort me the way Tiffany did. But it's not Jill's fault Tiffany is just the smartest most compassionate person I've ever known and Jill just isn't as smart. Then if she would confront me about saying those things about her that my response to her would have been. I love you for all of your other qualities. Nobody makes a sandwich like you do and I think long term you won't gauge me for my money. At first she tried to say that this was a totally different issue but once we talked more about it she finally agreed it is because of the way we both approach and value sex. She ultimately admitted that this would really hurt her feelings but she would not break up with me over it. I then responded that even in my make-believe scenario, which BTW I would never say to anyone out loud about anyone I loved, she could improve her level of education and learn to be more compassionate. Edit 3. If anyone even reads this I want to add one last thing. People have been telling me what a whiny tramp I am. That's one of the more kind things they've said. Because I can't get over someone else in the world having a bigger joystick than me. Not going to lie and say I'm thrilled with it but I'm not dumb enough to think I have a giant magic wand or anything. I had grown up believing what I now know to be a lie that women don't care about size. Some don't but obviously some do and my ex is one of those that obviously did. But even with that ultimately I might have been able to get over it if it was just said as a matter of fact. But hearing that no matter what I did, how much I loved her or any other thing that I was never going to be as good as what has bothered me since. Yes size is obviously a big part of it, but if I hadn't heard that I would never be the lover I think I might have been okay. Well not okay but at least not relationship destroying. Yes I overvalue sex. I get that. Yes it is very important to me and well frankly I want to be wanted as much as I want to want someone, if that makes any sense. Yes I know whoever I date in the future will most likely have had someone who was either bigger, better or whatever. But I would really hope that they would not be still hung up on it a few years later. Final update. I wasn't going to post anymore but I am still getting daily direct messages wanting to know how things are going. 
I do appreciate the kind words and concerns, but just so anyone who cares can know. It is over. I went to counseling with her on three different occasions and honestly I tried to have an open mind about it. But at the end of the day the obstacle was just too much to overcome. I even gave her an opportunity to walk back her statement or amend it or well do whatever she wanted to with it. But instead she doubled down in a way. I think by that time she was very frustrated as well. Neither of us are really happy about this. It has been an absolute nightmare for me trying to avoid telling people, family why we are no longer together. Of course I tried the old it's none of your business to some of them but that failed spectacularly and since I refused to tell they decided she cheated on me and started spreading that around. I've had to do a lot of damage control over that. I've decided to continue with therapy on a personal level because honestly this entire thing has really messed with my head and I have no self-esteem left at all. I've only seen her once since we separated and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. She is now, justifiably so, in the angry stage. She is furious with me and has called me everything that you can imagine and then even made up some words. TLDR, it's over. I tried going to counseling and things only got worse. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.